The Lions last night released the special that they've done the last couple of years, the Inside the Den. This was Inside the Den Part 3. And what it is, if you haven't seen it or heard about it, is it's a behind-the-scenes look at what the Lions do during the draft. And it was clear early on that they really coveted Jameer Gibbs. And it, it starts with them contemplating, do they take him at six or not? Now, I agree with Stoney, I think, said this this morning, that his his feeling was that if, if Witherspoon was available to them at six, that Witherspoon would have been the pick, the defensive back from uh, from Illinois that went to, where did he go, Seattle, I think? Um, that if that had been the pick, if he was there, that that's who the Lions would have taken. And I kind of agree with him. So they really like Gibbs. And they contemplated taking him at six, but they thought, let's roll the dice. Let's get some value for the pick. And sure enough, Arizona calls. And you get to hear a very little bit of the conversation that Arizona wants to move up. And the Lions end up deciding, okay, it's worth it. They're going to trade the pick and they'll get another second round pick and, and, and go ahead and make a deal. And they make the deal. And they move from six to 12. And then they're concerned that Jameer Gibbs won't be there. They're hoping, they're hoping, they're hoping, and then it looks a pay, then it looks like they're going to be back to back offensive linemen taken. And sure enough, Skaronsky goes to the pick right before them, and Jameer Gibbs is there at twelve, and they don't hesitate and they take him. And the reaction they show, the reaction from everybody, everyone in the room is high fiving each other. They're having a great time. They're hugging each other. Then they show the uh, Brad Holmes picks up the phone and calls Jameer Gibbs, talks to him, and you can hear the one side of the conversation. Uh, sometimes they show the other side of the conversation in text, but you know you don't see the player. Sometimes you see the player because they might have a camera on him, um, and, and that stuff's all kind of cool. And then Brad Holmes passes the phone over to Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell says what he says, and he hands the phone over to to the owner Sheila Hamp, and she talks, and then she ends up ending the call, okay, bye-bye, and, and and on to the next one. And after they made that, you know, they that, that selection, they're like, wow, we got, you know, top guy on our board. That's it's great. Um, I imagine it was top guy on the board who was available at that time. But then the pick comes at 18, and they're like, what should we do at 18? we got to think about this. We're on the clock. Are we going to do it? We need to trade back. We like Jack Campbell a lot. We want to take Jack. I feel good with Jack Campbell. You feel good with Jack? I, I, I feel good about Jack. Let's make it. Let's do it. All right. Well, Jack Campbell it is. And they select Jack Campbell, and again, the whole Ruby Rops, everybody goes nuts, and it's great. Now, I understand that this is edited <laughs> and that they're going to make it look as special as possible for these players. But when all was said and done, after they made their first four selections in the draft, and they make it seem like they there, there were only 14 players that they deemed worthy of a first-round pick, and they got four of them, I think there was a, a genuineness in the special when it showed the reaction to getting guys like Laporta and Brian Branch in particular. That those two, like when they when they saw that Brian Branch was still available and they couldn't believe it, they contemplated taking Brian Branch before they took Laporta, but they decided the tight end meant meant more at that time. But then Branch was available, and they made the move to to trade up to get them to ensure that they got four of the top 14 players in their mind. it's pre- It was pretty incredible. Now, of course, they're going to love every single pick they make, and what you don't see is them maybe discussing other players that they would select at that time. You never saw any of that. What you saw was them discussing the player that they would eventually take, which makes sense. And there's video behind it, and the whole thing was was pretty cool. But I'm curious if, if people had a chance to watch that last night. 248-539-9797. Did you get a chance to watch this last night? Do you plan on watching it over the weekend? It's like an hour long, but it's fascinating TV in my mind because of the discussions that do take place. And then they show some uh, some of the interviews that they had at the draft combine, which was really cool to see how they, they talk to the players and how the players respond to that. Uh, then there's some other really cool things when the players get introduced to uh, – to, to the staff when they come into the building, which we'll get into that coming up in just a little bit because that was something that was really, really cool. But did you watch that last night? Do you plan on watching it? 
um, the hype train about the Lions draft uh, draft class. Um, you know, we heard Dan Campbell there to start the segment about how he's setting the bar very low for the rookies in training camp because he expects them to get smacked around. Well, if you set the bar low and expecting the rookies to get smacked around, guess what's going to happen? When the rookies respond and play well, you're going to talk about them, and it's going to build up the hype machine a little bit more, which will be interesting how these guys acclimate themselves to the National Football League. But the first day in pads, I'm curious to see what people have to say about them.